Good afternoon. I will share on depression and anxiety in couples enrolled in a trial of an intervention for PMTCT and family health in southwestern Kenya. Um, we, as we all know that uh, depression and anxiety impedes PMTCT efforts. And to make matters worse, there is low uptake of mental health services and the stigma around mental health is, um, is, catas is catastrophic. And so this was a randomized control trial. Uh, we enrolled both HIV positive and HIV negative uh, women and their male partners in 24 uh, healthcare facilities in southwestern Kenya. And thereafter, uh, they were randomized into three arms, that is couple-based uh, uh, home visits, um, HIV self-testing, and standard care. Um, we collected data at baseline at three months postpartum and 12 months postpartum, and um, participants were asked to complete a PHQ-8 uh, depression measure, and those who scored uh, greater than or equal to 10 were classified as major depression. Um, very fast, the results just highlight. Um, at baseline, uh, it was noted that uh, females were more likely to report experiencing major depression than male. Uh, it's also important to notice that HIV positive participants were more likely to experience major depression than HIV negative participants. Um, the uh, uh, very fast to the discussion, um, uh, we noted that reporting of mental health issues is very low, especially among men, um, and then couples, both the, uh, the female and the male uh, partners are very reluctant to uh, seek medical health, uh, mental health assistance because of a number of issues, both facility level and individual level. Uh, to conclude, uh, it's important that we build uh, uh, capacity of both community and healthcare providers around issues of, uh, of mental health. This will enhance uh, and improve diagnosis and the treatment of depression um, and anxiety. And so it's also important that um, we enhance self-care awareness around mental health issues, especially through information, education, and communication. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Esther, I work with Achieving Health Nigeria Initiative on the EPIC project funded by EPIC PEFA through USID. I'll be discussing our, our work on collaboration with traditional bed attendants in Aquaibom to improve access to HIV testing among pregnant women. Next slide. Okay. okay, in Nigeria, HIV testing services for pregnant women are only available where ANC is provided by skilled healthcare worker. In Aquaibom, 76% of pregnant women do not receive ANC from skilled healthcare worker. We worked with the traditional bed attendants to improve access to HIV testing services for pregnant women and early infant diagnosis in the States. How did we do this? Advocacy meetings were conducted with 21, with the 21 coordinators of the traditional bed attendants across the 21 local governments where we implemented, exploring the possibility of providing HIV testing services and early infant diagnosis in their facilities. In return, the TBA shared their ANC registration days. Community testing teams visited the TBAs offered HIV testing to pregnant women and obtained geocoordinates using the Kubo Collect app, which was mapped with the ArcGIS. The TBAs were all linked to comprehensive ART health facilities in the hub and spoke model, and those who tested HIV positive were referred to the facility for management. TBAs also informed the community teams about deliveries of any HIV positive woman for early infant diagnosis tests to be done. This study spanned between June to November 2021. Over the six month period, 840 TBAs were mapped and linked to 21 primary healthcare centers. Over 40,000 40, pregnant women were tested 
and you can see that 56% of these women were tested through the TBAs. And we identified these TBAs con contributed 15.4% of the pregnant women diagnosed of HIV within the same period. Within the period, 11.1% of early infant diagnosis samples were collected through TBAs, and we identified 13.6% of infants that with HIV diagnosed through the EID within through the TBAs. It's worthy to note that case finding rates in the TBA was actually lower than that in the facility. Linkage to treatment was 100% across board. It's collaborating with TBAs provides a structured approach to addressing the missed opportunities among pregnant women and reducing the missed opportunities for early infant diagnosis of exposed infant. And it's also important that collaborating with TBAs to conduct, to, collaborating with TBAs and even going beyond that to build the capacity of the TBAs to conduct HIV testing themselves could be a more cost-effective and a sustainable approach for improving HIV testing among pregnant women. I want to acknowledge all those who worked on the team. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nunjani Papengo. I am a research coordinator at the South African Medical Research Council, and I'll be presenting work titled, You Tell Him That Baby, um, I'm Protecting Myself, Women's Agency Constraints Stigma, and the Potential um, for PrEP Use in Durban, South Africa. Uh, we have no financial disclosures. Right, so um, oral PrEP is an effective form of HIV prevention that is underutilized by young women in South Africa, uh, despite it being publicly available. Prior research in clinical trials have shown that um, barriers in PrEP use include stigma, low perceived HIV risk, side effects, and in excess. Um, few studies have actually um, examined PrEP accessibility in urban, educated South African women uh, who have the capacity to enact PrEP use. Um, the Masibambane study introduced PrEP to young women in Durban through six focus group discussions and eight IDIs um, to examine how stigma and relationship dynamics affect South African women's willingness to use PrEP. HIV, um, young HIV uh, negative women were recruited from universities and community settings. Um, qualitative research guides explored PrEP in a context of the young women's lives. We used an interactive team-based approach to coding using NVivo 12, a code book that's shown on my right. Okay, um, the group of young women were highly educated. 85% um, were current students with one partner and no children. Um, this was also a health-seeking population with 90% having uh, being HIV, uh, being HIV uh, tested in the past year. Okay, uh, these are some of the results. Um, women reported barriers um, to their, uh, sorry, a woman reported barriers to their own uptake of HIV, which includes stigma um, of uh, female sexuality and HIV. They were concerned that others uh, would perceive the pills as ARVs and PrEP pills would label them as promiscuous. Um, in the eyes of their families and partners. They also worried that um, the, there would be major negative impact on their relationships. Okay, okay these, some of, these are some of the quotes um, uh, that we took from the FGDs and the IDIs. These actually uh, show that these quotes are actually tied to stigma um, as well as sexuality. Okay. Okay, here, How, uh, I would also, okay, sorry. Okay, so some of these quotes actually is, uh, exemplify two stigmas. Um, stigma tied to HIV sexuality. In both cases, uh, these fears are based on assumption of what others might think of the young woman if they are taking PrEP. However, women also highlighted factors to PrEP. They acknowledge its efficacy and significance as a form of an HIV prevention that is completely in their control. They said that um, it can be facilitated by open communication and having uh, an HIV, uh, a partner who's also taking PrEP. These are also quotes uh, from the focus group discussions and IDIs. Um, some of these quotes exemplify a high HIV 
uh, high HIV risk and uh, women living in HIV uh, see this as a, as a big stressor and that if they actually take, pre uh, take, press, take PrEP, this could actually help them decrease stress, okay? And in conclusion, so and in conclusion, despite of the multiple pressures and stigmas that women associated with PrEP use, uh, participants suggested programming and messaging to boost their autonomy and facilitate their uptake of this effective method. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anita Ejide, and I work with the Epin Public Health Initiatives. And I'll be going through uh, my abstract titled Human Resource for Health, the impact of the case management teams on continuity of treatment among PLHIVs in Plateau State. So to start off, we all know it's well known that adequate health workforce is a key building block towards achieving se optimal service delivery. However, that's a challenge in developing countries such as mine, Nigeria. So it was on this note that the case management team, the CMT, came on board as a CDC initiative, which is set to improve HIV service delivery through efficient staff utilization with the goal of um, retaining clients in care and also ensuring optimum viral load coverage and suppression. And this initiative, through CDC's implementing partner, APIN Public Health Initiatives, commenced in Plateau State in December 2020. And the study was carried out to review the impact of the CMT implementation on continuity of treatment across our supported facilities. So for the methods, it was a data review that was carried out. 28 treatment sites were selected Prior to this um, initiative, we carried out a human resource needs assessment. And following that, some ad hoc staff were engaged as case managers under the program. So for the case management team itself, is a team that constitutes of five staff with an allotted client load of at most 1,000 clients per team. And each team is made up of an ART nurse, a data entry clerk, a viral load champion, a lay nurse adherence counselor, and an ART linkage, linkage and retention coordinator, which we also call the retention officer. So the retention officer was actually who the focus of this study, and they worked towards preventing um, treatment interruptions and improving retention in care through regular follow-up calls and prompt tracking of defaulters. And the key variables that were reviewed was our TX score, that was the number of clients that were active and receiving antiretroviral therapy, and those who had interruption in treatment. So for the results, we looked at the picture with and before the CMT and with the CMT. And with the CMT, we saw remarkable improvement um, which was characterized by a growth in our TX score numbers and a drop in our IIT numbers. And the findings just showed that strengthening human resource for health is actually key to us improving continuity in treatment. Thank you very much. Thank you.